I wanted to welcome you all this Christmas day to the First United Church of Christ here in Mount Pleasant. Our gospel today comes from Luke. It comes from chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. For those in those days a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David. To be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, as she gave birth to her firstborn, her firstborn son, and wrapped him in the swaddling cloths, and laid him in the manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, but they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, fear, Be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David the Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away, went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went in haste. They found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known to them the saying which had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all these things, honoring them in their heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it has been told, as it had been told to us. The word of God. Gracious Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this blessed day you coming into our world to give us the hope, to give us the guidance. To show us the true love. May that spirit burn bright within us, Lord, not just for us, that we may, hopefully, we may spread that, that joy and this good news to the world. Amen. So the world celebrates Christmas. It's a big deal. And for many folks, yes, they made it to church last night. Christmas Eve, they, they sang their, their carols, they listened to the Christmas story. But for the masses, why do they really go? Many only do so for it's what they do. That's what you do on Christmas Eve because one, one two times of the year you go to church, either Easter morning or Christmas Eve. So they, they did their, their C and E day. But it's a ritual, meaning that, that it, it, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what you do on Christmas Eve, you know, you, you go to church. It's a tradition. Believe me, it's a great tradition. It's wonderful to be here with all you folks last night, to sing the songs, to just experience the, the excitement of, the, of gathering together as a, as a body of Christ. It's a wonderful thing. Be with all that is beloved by God. But there are those out there that aren't really spiritual. Uh, they don't really have a calling or a yearning. It's just something that they do, something that, that I better do or my folks are going to be mad at. Just something you always do without much thought, without much thinking. It's just part of the tradition, the ritual, the Christmas. 
But for those of us who came today to church, I can mention, you came to worship on Christmas Day. That is a true expression of your devotion, folks. How many made it today? I know churches have canceled today's service. Not they weren't out, but they did last night. That's enough. But being here today, celebrating Christmas, a true expression of devotion of you all, of the, of the love shown for our Savior, Jesus Christ. For you have to, you have to go outside your comfort zone. You are thinking a little bit beyond the box to be here. I mean, with all the kids and everything over there, presents and all the things that we have planned to do for Christmas Day. How many folks headed to worship? But you made it. You placed your witness to Jesus Christ as the priority over our individual lives and our individual celebrations. And this desire to really witness to the birth of Jesus our gospel today was probably that first apparent uh, uh, example of that with the shepherds in the field watching those flocks by night. You know, they not only put themselves uh, out of their norm. You know, it's like they could have seen the angel, they could hear the whole heavenly host and all that stuff. And they could have said, this is wonderful. They would praise God, but hey, we still got sheep here. I'm not sure if it's a good idea to go anywhere. You know he's in Bethlehem, but uh, there's some risk involved. Flocks unattended, vulnerable to predators or thieves. They could have lost everything, their whole livelihoods. Yet, they went in haste to witness because they knew it was that important. It was that important. It was their faith, so evident, encouraged by the angel, that convinced them to go. And they would be the first, the first to be directly called by God to go and witness Jesus as a babe, to find him not at the inn, but wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger, for there was no room. And it was the shepherd's humility, it was their lowliness, their, their dedication. That's what made this happen. That's why they were called first. I mean, really, they were considered some of the least as far as society was concerned. As far as worldly existence, they weren't very high on the, on the scale at all. But they would become the greatest symbol of the mission of Jesus. What do we know Jesus has? The great shepherd. They became the first folks that Christ's birth would be revealed to because of the message and the symbolism that was in them. And we know, yes, there is a lesson to be learned here today in the, in the, in the shepherds for us as well. If we too desire to witness to the immaculate truth that is our Savior, Jesus Christ, our lives, too, must be lived as the was the shepherds, with humility, lowliness, meaning not to be so full of ourselves, and in true dedication to God and our faith walk, even putting ourselves in jeopardy at times before he calls us to go. It is our witness of belief in all aspects of our lives. That's what God calls us go and witness to Jesus. So when it comes to, when it comes to Christmas, or really not any aspect of our faith, you know, it's not so much, and I really, I enjoy the pageantry, I enjoy the music, I enjoy all the traditions. I mean, when I think about Christmas, I'm not so celebrating with you all, I'm celebrating with all the past also, we are celebrating with all that will be in the future. 
It's not about so much the pageantry as much as we enjoy it. It's all about what truly dwells within us. It is that light that comes to the world of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we tie the time in a moment of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this day of remembrance, but more so of anticipation of what's to come. The truth of Jesus Christ has come into our world. May we be the proponents of the truth, to spread the good news, to live as the example of life that you brought to us. Lord, help us always to be your true church, giving you the glory. Gracious God, there's people in our communities too who need your help and healing, and we ask your grace to be upon them. People like Ellen Bellier, Ellen Benedict, Benny Edwards, the Shaw family, Nancy Seebeck, the Anderson family, Candy Shintation, uh, Mary Ann Owens, Kelly Butler, Susan, Ken and Ida Wiltrout, Bill and Deb Bachman, Reverend Don Watkins. And gracious God, we also raise these names to you now in our hearts for your help and your healing. Gracious God, as you know best, keep help and protect and guide us in your ways. This we ask in Jesus' name and taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The last kingdom, the power, and the glory of heaven. Amen.